Hey guys and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. So in the previous couple of videos we have been discussing using Linux on your M1 Mac. Basically running Linux either natively like ARM version of Linux or running Linux x86 on your Mac. I mean both uh, options are available right here but it makes the most sense to run of course the native like ARM version of everything. Native version of Linux or Windows or whatever like ARM version. That's why today we're gonna discuss running Windows on ARM. Windows 10 on ARM and that's what I actually installed right here I've been experimenting with it for a little bit and just wanted to share my experience so first of all when you go to the Microsoft website to download this like insider preview version of uh, Windows 10 you need to make sure you understand all the terms the main condition that you are basically allowing to share all optional and not only optional diagnostic data directly with Microsoft so this basically means that you are sharing all your like usage statistics versus Microsoft and like seriously I mean it's a huge privacy problem because you like sharing everything if you're ready for that that's okay but it's actually sharing not just like some anonymous kind of data it's actually sharing your own user data for me this is the primary reason that i don't want to run it like as a permanent solution i just want to like experiment with it try a few apps there and there but i don't want to run it directly like all the time because i don't want to share my usage statistic with microsoft i just don't like it that, that's it i always disable that let me actually show it to you so when you open the start menu here and you type settings and then for example you type diagnostic and feedback so basically optional diagnostic data is disabled for me right here and because I disabled it's not actually possible to update this version so basically if you disabled optional diagnostic data you're just stuck with this beta version until it actually like the final version is released or something basically it's not really really actionable if you like care about privacy if you don't care about privacy and all that stuff I just disregard this point and just like go ahead and install that but just like I just want to warn you about that guys so it's basically like you are sharing everything with Microsoft of all the statistics about using the supporting system so it's all up to you getting the windows 10 copy for the arm is actually really easy you just sign up for the insider preview with your microsoft account and you just get it you get the file and you run it on the parallels and the parallels is also like technical preview and you also need to sign up and share all the statistics i guess so basically it's all very very better guys you just be aware of that that basically you're sharing a lot of your information about how you use this virtual machines and all that let's actually discuss how it runs so for example i installed a bunch of apps here the first one for example is open office and this one is actually x86 version guys it's just like running in some kind of emulation i guess but when i run it it seems to be running actually fine it's like running smooth i don't see any problems it's just like running fine i was able to install it no problems whatsoever next step i want to show is the paint.net and it's also running just fine you just open it and i mean it just like works there is no problems at all in some cases you need to install like .net framework and i was able to install .net 1.1 so it's basically i thought there's gonna be some kind of compatibility problems but seems like it's working fine so guys i didn't know no complaints at all so basically it works next thing total commander i mean this one is 64 bit so that's why it's running pretty fine and guys notice this so basically we have program files arm we have program files x86 and i mean i don't really like this kind of separation and in, in the windows operating systems right basically it has x86 arm and basically a total device bar architecture for the regular user like seeing this kind of stuff is like what is like what is that but basically device every everything by uh, the architecture right which is not really cool but I guess it's fine and of course running Firefox or anything else is just totally fine it works and I mean the speed is fine let me actually prove it to you so I'm basically running like one of my videos here in the Firefox and as you can see it's pretty smooth it's fine it works just totally fine I don't see any problems so basically Firefox works Edge works and I'm pretty sure other browsers are also gonna work because mostly everything right now is based on Chromium engine and that's why it just works fine CPU ID uh, let me actually see how it works because it says the error code occurred during installation do you want to display the error log file let's say yes it showed but I think it still opens it so basically it still opens it just finds arm processor arm v8 parallels arm virtual platform that's okay so basically it works it, it works but I don't know like maybe it's not very accurate like who knows next thing is a CC cleaner for example this one actually doesn't work I just try to start it it doesn't work nothing just like doesn't even start I don't know why next thing is a full bar and basically this is the app for or opening the audio files like mp3s for example or anything else basically you open it it just like works fine I mean I see no problems which is cool great it's a great application the VLC media player of course also no problems at all I mean no problems whatsoever just works perfectly fine next thing is the Mozilla Thunderbird let's see how it works installed fine no problems working well okay this one works what else but there are some surprises for example the PowerShell I tried to open the Microsoft Windows PowerShell and is you can 
can see it just says install the latest power shelf for new features that's okay but it just closes like this I don't know it doesn't work for some reason no idea why 7-zip the application to work with your archives works really well just fine so it just opens fine no issues at all next thing is the Microsoft Store I actually saw some reports of people saying that it doesn't work on the Windows 10 for ARM but as you can see for me it works just fine I mean I actually installed a few apps from here I installed Ubuntu here through the Microsoft Store and uh, guys I mean it doesn't really work for some reason so it's this part it doesn't really work so let me show it to you so when I open Ubuntu and it says this installing this may take a few minutes and then says failed with error blah 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 there's some error basically so for some reason Windows subsystems for Linux I think this is how it called it doesn't work you cannot run those machines here for some reason or maybe maybe I'm not aware of some specific patch or customization I need to make so basically this one doesn't work next thing is the Visual Studio so it's not Visual Studio code, it's just real Visual Studio 2019 for example. I just installed from the Microsoft website. It actually showed me an error, basically it's, it doesn't work on the ARM platform, it's not compatible, but if you want to continue, go ahead and continue. So basically I continued and installed this one. It seems like it's running in some kind of emulation layer or I don't know, but it actually runs. So yeah, Visual Studio seems to be working, but I have not tried it extensively, so yeah. Next thing to try is RSS Reader. So for example, this app seems to be popular. Guys, I mean, I have not used Windows extensively for the past like decade but I've just read that this one is like a really good RSS reader so that's why I installed this one just to try it out and it seems to be working fine just a typical Windows application and it's running probably in some kind of emulation on uh, Windows ARM it seems to be working fine so this is how Windows 10 is running in parallels but there's one more thing I wanted to discuss so this thing is the settings of the parallels itself so you can configure settings of Windows 10 and the way how it integrates with your Mac OS uh, host and basically for me some settings were like really ridiculous I just wanted to disable it right away for example the sharing by default it shares your home directory like all your user files with your Windows 10 for ARM guest machine and I don't like that I just disabled right away and it seems to be working fine now I mean but by default it shares all the stuff it's just like wow I mean I don't like it I don't like to share stuff between my host and guest sometimes maybe but with this like beta version of Windows no way no way I mean it just can impact my files delete something I don't want to but share windows I actually left it because i think you can access your windows files from mac itself so basically this kind of integration is fine and of course there's also clipboard integration i think i also disabled all that so basically i just configured this kind of stuff applications tab by default actually it when you launch any application on your windows 10 virtual machine it actually shows those applications like in a dock and this kind of integration i don't like it i mean i don't like it guys maybe you like it but no no, no not for me yeah also optimization i left it like no limit but you can actually show how much resources you want to allocate to the virtual machine basically like for example my Mac only has 8 GB of RAM that's why I mean probably it makes more sense to set it somewhere like to the medium or even low because you don't want to allocate too much resources to the virtual machine right you want your host machine to be working just fine but actually like one feature this feature is like uh, I guess it's like very exclusive to parallels because I have never seen it like in virtual box or VMware okay maybe I'm mistaken maybe it's available but for the parallels it's a really cool feature for example it says pause Windows after 30 seconds. So basically, if you do not use your virtual machine for 30 seconds, I think it kind of pauses it. And there are more settings available. You can just go ahead and customize all, all those the way you want. Hardware, security, yeah, basically snapshots and all that. You can customize what uh, hardware you want to basically have in your virtual machine. Basically, if you want to connect printers or not, by default, it started just to plug all the printers from all my uh, host machine. And I don't like that. It basically it just takes too much customizations by default. And all those customization just like invade user privacy in my opinion it's like too much what's my opinion about running Windows 10 ARM version on your Mac M1 machine I think it's like it's too early to say it's not really a good solution because in it's just all beta version you just like sharing too much stuff with Microsoft because it's a better solution I would recommend waiting the final release and, and in the final release just disable all that stuff but if you need to run some specific Windows applications if you cannot figure out any other way of running your Windows application applications on a Mac maybe that's a good solution because for example there is like a crossover or a play on Mac or just like plain wine solutions for running Windows applications on your Mac and you can just experiment with those and if it doesn't work you can actually try that but again it's all the beta and some apps are not running the set for example CC cleaner doesn't work that's why you might want to like hold off and just like wait for actual final release of that because I don't know 
it all seems like uh, kind of experimental right now at this moment, guys. This is how it works. This is the state of things of running Windows 10 for ARM on your Mac machine. We'll see how it goes, but so far, quite exciting. Just like waiting for the final version when it's finally available. All right, thank you guys and bye-bye.